the module 2 analysis of first and strain so the introduction part in uh, many engineering applications uh, machine components may be subjected to a combination of normal and uh, shearing stresses uh, combined together or simultaneously so in this situation it is uh, necessary to find the combined effect of these stresses on planes other than right angle to the line of action of force uh, the stresses acting on the oblique section are considered for the combined stress analysis so next one is principal planes so uh, it has been observed that at any point in a strained material uh, there are three planes they are mutually perpendicular to each other which carry direct stresses only and no shear stresses a little consideration will show that out of these three direct stresses one will be maximum the other one is minimum and the third an intermediate between the two so this particular planes which have no shear stress are known as principal planes next one principal stress uh, the magnitude of direct stress across a principal plane is known as principal stress uh, the determination of for this uh, principal planes and then principal stress is an important factor in the design of various uh, structures and machine components so next one is three dimensional stress system so in any two dimensional stress system uh, there will be two mutually perpendicular directions and three stresses two normal stresses and one shear stress in any three dimensional stress system so we can find three mutually perpendicular directions and nine stresses so out of nine three normal stress and six shear stresses so here in the figure you can see uh, along uh, x direction sigma x tau xy and tau xz are acting so normal stress is sigma x whereas the shear stresses are sigma xy and sigma xz whereas along y axis again one direct stress or normal stress and two shear stresses are acting so in the third axis that is uh, z axis one normal stress and two shear stresses are acting so therefore the normal stresses are sigma x sigma y and sigma z whereas the shear stresses are tau xy tau xz tau yz tau, uh, tau zx and tau zy so these are the shear stresses uh, the stress components of a three dimensional coordinate system can be represented in the form of the stress tensor so the stress stress are can be written in the matrix form t3 is equals to sigma x tau xy tau xz tau xy sigma y tau yz next tau xz tau yz and sigma z so this matrix is called the stress tensor next one stresses on an ob inclined plane or oblique plane so to find the stresses acting on an inclined plane in a stresses material we consider a general plane inclined at an angle theta to the known plane in an element and we find normal and tangential stresses so tangential stress is nothing but shear stresses so on this plane uh, the normal stresses are induced along this section normal to the axis of the loading on the oblique plane both normal and tangential stresses are induced so let us consider an element so 
so which is subjected to a tensile load f and uh, let us consider an oblique or inclined plane eb so which is inclined with respect to the horizontal line theta so due to the application of this load uh, there is a normal stress uh, sigma n which is acting on the inclined plane eb and uh, there is a another stress called the tangential stress or shear stress so which acts along the inclined plane which is represented by sigma t suffix t or tau so where sigma n represent the normal stress so which is nothing but sigma n is equals to sigma whereas tangential stress sigma t is also known as shear stress therefore sigma t can be written as tau so the stresses on this inclined plane can be determined by two methods one is analytical method another one is graphical method so there are three types of stressed conditions we are going to consider especially for the element so first one is uniaxial direct stresses second one biaxial direct stresses and third one is general two dimensional stress system now the first one element subjected to uniaxial direct stress system let us consider a large element so which is subjected to a pure or direct stress sigma x in a tensile condition so in this large element we are going to consider the small portion of the element so which is shown in blue color so let us consider this small element so which is subjected to the direct stress sigma x uh, let us consider the oblique plane or inclined plane bc so which is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the vertical line so on this line a normal stress n which is induced by an angle theta with respect to the inclined line now let us consider the small portion of the element so which has inclined plane bc which is having inside angle abc theta uh, which is subjected to direct stress sigma x so because of application of these direct stresses so there are two types of stresses are induced along uh, this inclined plane one is normal stress which is represented by sigma n and having angle theta with respect to the direct stress sigma x so another one is a tangential stress or shear stress which is induced across the inclined plane and which is tangent to this oblique plane bc which is represented by sigma nt but uh, i want the forces normal force and uh, tangential forces so therefore the force can be written as stress into area so stress is sigma n then to find the area width into thickness so since it is having unit thickness so we can consider one so like that for tangential forces stress tangential stress multiplied by the area for direct stress sigma x is the stress multiplied by the area so in order to resolve the stresses normal stress and tangential stress across the direct stress we are going to consider the triangle that is so first we have to draw the direct stress that is sigma x into ab so next one normal stress we have to consider so parallel to this line draw a line in a downward direction so which represent the normal stress whereas parallel to this tangential stress draw a line dotted line so we, this joins the direct stress by an angle theta so therefore this is
this line represent sigma x into a b cos theta whereas this line represent the sigma x into a b sin theta so the force due to the stress sigma x is resolved along normal and tangential direction so first one sum of the normal forces must be equals to zero so the first normal force is sigma n into bc into 1 and uh, from this triangle so we have sigma x into ab cos theta but in the opposite direction therefore negative sigma x ab into cos theta is equals to 0 so there is no other forces which is acting parallel to this normal stress therefore only two forces we have to consider so then sigma n can be written as sigma x into a b by b c cos theta but a b by b c is nothing but cos theta so from this triangle therefore sigma n that is normal stress becomes sigma x into cos square theta next so to find the uh, the effect of uh, tangential forces so we are going to consider the sum of the tangent tang tangential forces which is acting on the member must be equals to zero so the first tangential force which is acting on the inclined plane is sigma nt bc into one so the other so we have to search for the other forces which is acting parallel to this so we have sigma x a b sin theta in the opposite direction therefore minus sigma x a b into sin theta which is equals to zero therefore sigma nt can be written as sigma x into a b by b c sin theta so a b by b c is nothing but cos theta from the triangle therefore sigma nt can be written as uh, cos sin theta uh, cos theta into sin theta can be written as sin 2 theta by 2 therefore the normal stress can be written as sigma nt is equals to sigma x by 2 into sin 2 theta so to find the resultant stress so we can use this equation sigma r is equals to root of sigma n square plus sigma nt square so this equation gives the resultant stress which is acting on the member now let us solve the problem a circular bar of diameter 25 mm is subjected to an axial force of 20 kilo newton as shown in figure find the stresses on a plane making 30 degree to the plane of axial stresses and also on the plane which has maximum shear stress so this is the given figure so if you see this figure so we'll come to know uh, the object or the bar is subjected to only one direction load so which indicates that so it comes under uniaxial direct stress system so therefore we have to use the formulas which are related to uniaxial direct stress systems and it is having an inclined plane uh, that is which is making 30 degree to the axial stress now let us see how to solve this problem so first we have to find the direct stresses because only uh, direct loads are given using that load we have to find the direct stresses so therefore so we know the general formula of a stress sigma is equals to a load upon area so the load which is acting on the member is uh, 20 kilo newton therefore 20 into 1000 and area so it is having circular cross section and diameter is 25 therefore pi by 4 into 25 square so after simplification we got 40.74 newton per millimeter square so next using this direct stress and with the help of uh, the angle 
uh, that is the oblique plane which is inclined to the plane theta value directly we can find the normal stress so that is normal stress is equals to sigma x into cos square theta so this is sigma x value whereas theta value is 30 degree so substitute sigma x and the theta value here after simplification we got the normal stress 30.55 newton per millimeter square so next one so we know that uh, shear stress formula tau is equals to sigma by 2 sin 2 theta so the sigma direct stress value so we got 40.74 into sine of 2 into 30 therefore 60 degree sin 60 degree divided by 2 so after simplification we got 17.64 newton per millimeter square so this is the shear stress so to obtain the maximum shear stress because in the problem so they are asked to find uh, the maximum shear stresses so we know the always uh, the maximum shear stress occurs on a plane where theta is equals to 45 degree okay so whenever the angle is 45 degree then only we will get the maximum shear stress so therefore the maximum shear stress sigma by 2 sine 2 theta so in place of theta we have to substitute 45 degree uh, sigma x value is 40.74 divided by 2 sine of 2 into 45 degree so it becomes sine 90 sin 90 is 1 therefore uh, after simplification we got 20.37 newton per millimeter square so this is the value of maximum shear stress and uh, this is the value of normal stress and this is the value of shear stress